Jupiter. I'm doing this video again because the first one took up about 20 minutes. And I don't think anyone wants to sit through conversation about compression for that long. So I'm going to try and speed it up a little bit. This video is about compression because we can't move forward on a mix without understanding what compression is. It's taken me years. I think maybe this will make more sense than just talking through it. Um, this picture is pretty useful. Um, so let's just talk, get the definition out of the way. We got the beyond the beat up here. So compression is the process of lessening the dynamic range, the distance between lowest and highest points of amplitude of a signal, the dynamic range of a signal, boosting the quieter parts and attenuating the louder. Now attenuating is a super common word in audio production because uh, because compression is a super common utility um, and process. Attenu attenuating means pushing down or the quieting of. Right there where you see that orange, that is compressor working. It is a attenuating the signal that went above a threshold. So dynamic range. We actually defined that term last semester the dynamic range of a signal is the difference between the loudest peaks and the lowest valleys of amplitude. So not specifically by instrument or genre, this is about waveforms. So when you look at this image, which is actually quite useful, you have the loudest peak right here, you have the quietest peak point right here. Now this could be a rise in volume based on the music. It could be, for example, Maybe these are snare drum hits that are getting hit, you know, inconsistently. This is noise in the in the room or the ringing out of cymbals. It could be anything. The dynamic range. So compression essentially is saying we don't want to have such wide di differences between quiet and loud. We want to kind of contain that within uh, parameters that we set, and that's based on threshold. Okay, uh, images here. This is the Dyn 3 compressor. It comes with Pro Tools, nothing special, but I'm going to use it because we all had it when we were in school. This is uh, an old school Yuri. It is um, an 1176 by Universal Audio. We have software version of this by Universal Audio. We have software version of this by Waves. We do have this hardware, DeKing. It's a PET 3 compressor. This is stereo, so you have one compressor on the left, one on the right. Uh, we use that when we're tracking. And this is um, a set of mic pre's. It's four mic pre's. It's the 4710D by Universal Audio. It has compressors built in, so I put it in there for a picture. So compression. Most common parameters, threshold. If you don't have a volume, if you don't have an, a, a signal, I should say, who's amplitude goes above your threshold, the compressor is not working. So how loud a signal has to be before the compressor goes to work. It's kind of a line. Cross this line. I dare you, cross this line. When you cross that line, I'm going to do something. And that's what the compressor is doing. You're setting that line, and it's called threshold. The ratio. Essentially, how strong is the compression going to be? If you come up above, so a 2 to 1 ratio, it's easier to explain for the math for my level of math, that is. Um, if you come above the threshold by two decibels, I'm going to push you down to one. You came up by two, I'm going to push you down to one. Came up by eight, I'm going to push you down to four. OK, so threshold ratio. You have attack, how fast the compressor is going to get to work when it hits that signal. And this is important, we'll talk about it, I'll put it off for now, um, in terms of what is it that you're compressing? A vocal versus a drum versus a piano versus a bass, it's all different. Uh, a vocal versus a rap vocal, it's different. Release, how long the compressor holds onto that signal, the one that's been attenuated, before letting it go back up to nothing. All right, so you cross the threshold, I get to work, I'm pushing down, I'm pushing down, I'm gonna let you up, I'm gonna let you up, slowly or quickly, depending on the content. 
And then the knee is essentially this line right here. Is it a gradual, right, right around there, is it a gradual shift um, when the compression hits or is it a softer um, or is it a, a, a stark or, or fast ramp? And it depends on content, okay? So speak speaking of content, we have a baseline. Now I did this and what we're looking at is just this baseline processed through compression three different ways. And I'm gonna try and do this quickly. This is unprocessed. I put on the compressor and I set the attack to 10 milliseconds. Okay, so attacks over here. And according to the name here, 10 millis and a 33 decibel dB threshold, 33, all right? So you have some other settings on this compressor and most. So you have your knee, uh, look at the knee. So this is a hard knee. And then we're flattening that out, it's soft. Hard, soft. We have our ratio, which I have set four to one. Release, how long is it gonna compress before saying you can go back. Uh, you have some side chain stuff, which I'm not getting into, you have some high pass, low pass frequencies. Gain, gain compensation and compression is huge and it is on almost every compressor. And I'd say if, it, if it's not there, it's not a compressor I'd wanna have. When you're compressing, you are quieting the signal. So you need to match it back up. But depending on some settings, your threshold, uh, your ratio and such, you can make it feel like a lot louder. And you wanna avoid that. You wanna dial back your gain, your volume of the output so that it really is the same as it was. Because it's not, we don't wanna play around with volume and fake ourselves out and say, oh, that sounds great. It's louder. You want to have control of your signal, which is really what compression gives you. So our regular baseline. So I'm gonna listen to it, then with the compressor. With the compressor, it's much louder. I'm gonna match that, because I wanna dial that back. So the attenuation here of you know, 12 decibels, it's massive it's for the demonstration. But um, if, I, if I were to say to pay attention to something to hear, is the, the string rattle. If you listen to the string rattle in a way, you, you hear more of it when it's compressed because it's quiet, it's one of the quieter sounds in the dynamic range, so to speak. You have the string, the note, and that rattle, this, the, the buzz. And as you compress, the buzz gets louder because the louder signal has been told to be quieter. It's been attenuated. string rattles to, to begin with okay but that's that's that okay so then what I did is I committed this track in this processing and I got this so let's listen to that for a second so I also just brought up the volume so you could hear it but I don't want to spend a lot of time listening to it I want to talk like look at it it's a really weird looking thing and this is with the attack of 10 milliseconds that's really slow really slow I mean it's 10 milliseconds so what's happening here is the uh, the transient the initial transient of my finger hitting the string got through before the compressor got to work attenuating the rest of, of the note and that's funky 
that's not really useful for a bass. Um, however, you might want to slow attack like that for a drum because you want that transient to come out and punch. You want that stick hitting the head to really come through and then you compress and kind of create um, a more gradual ramp, so to speak. This looks like, you know, a Tony Hawk half pipe. Um, but then you have a very consistent rest of the note because it's pretty heavy compression. Remember, this is the original, so it's a gradual ramp and it keeps getting quieter as the note sustains to silence when I stop it. Here, it's just radical. It's like, well, I'm a little slow, but I woke up and I'm telling you, go down, down with your bad self, all right? And it happens every time. Every time I hit a note, that transient sneaking through, which is why you see such a dramatic spike. All right, then I changed some parameters. I forgot, yeah, 420, great. And it's probably gonna be right around that date when you watch this. Um, this one, I changed the attack, that's what it was, to 420 microseconds. So from 10 milliseconds to 420 microseconds. And that dramatically changed um, the look of the note. You no longer have a transient sneaking through. You no longer have even, this is not gradual, by any means, but comparatively, we have told this note to just to be solid and quiet throughout. So this is still at a four to one ratio. So as opposed to seeing this big spike or this one, this has gone down, but it is just more or less a solid line, again, as opposed to a gradual ramp or this sharp ramp. There is almost no ramp here, just it is a solid line. And then for the last uh, example, just to visually, I changed the ratio from four to one to eight to one. So this is still at 420 microseconds, so a very fast attack. It is a slow release, by the way. So again, uh, the release is 668 milliseconds. And you can see it probably really never did let go that much because it's a, it's a long sustained note. So, you know, that bass is more or less just compressed, but it's compressed eight to one as opposed to four to one. So it's quieter. It has been told overall more or less by two to, to quiet itself, quieten itself down, quiet itself down. Quieten? Really? Did I say that? You heard it here. I think that's pretty much it. All right. So compressors, what they do, they limit the, the dynamic range. Most important parameters, threshold, attack, threshold, uh, the line after which amplitude gets attenuated. You got to know the word attenuated, which means, you know, quieting or pushing down on in terms of volume, amplitude. Uh, additional, so we said threshold, we said attack, release, output. You got to compensate. You want to have a similar volume, not dramatically different volumes. And then you're not sure what the compressor is actually doing. All right, we'll stop there.